Okay, we're going to talk about cognitive development here. And uh, this is really important uh, because uh, a lot of parents think that, okay, kids just go to school and they learn things when they're at school and at home. We can watch TV and do whatever and the kid's just going to learn passively. It doesn't work like that. Kids learn actively and it's really important for parents to take an active role in their kid's life. We're going to see a little statistic later on uh, that shows you uh, that there is a very big difference between socioeconomic status and the child's development, uh, particularly in language. And that probably corresponds to the amount of time a parent is able to dedicate to their child. And so the more of a role the parent plays in the child's life, the more tools the child's going to have when they go on uh, off to kindergarten and they're uh, in the classroom. So intellectual development begins early on in infancy, but we don't see the same, uh, the same dramatic changes in cognitive development in the first year of life like we do in motor development. In motor development, in the first year of life, you see crawling and then walking and cruising and running, and that all happens really early on. In the first year of life with cognitive development, it's, it's, it's pretty uneventful. Uh, even though there's a lot going on uh, behind the scenes inside the child, uh, what you really notice, uh, what the parent will really notice cognitively, that really happens in the second and third year of life. So the important aspects of cognitive development include language, both receptive, which tends to happen a little bit earlier, and productive speech. Of course, there may be difficulties with that if there's hearing impairment. Nonverbal communication, which tends to be the baby's way of communicating before language is, uh, is uh, developed. Object permanence, which is a very important milestone that happens at nine months of age, and uh, USMLE, will, uh, this is probably one of their favorite things to test on of all the milestones that come up in cognitive development. And then identification of quantity and size, which has to do with conservation, uh, which we'll look at what that means. And then uh, also important to know that uh, slow or absent language development may be the first sign of uh, possible mental handicap or other cognitive issues that affect language. Now, not all babies, certainly, that have slow or absent language development have a mental handicap, um, but... Uh, when a baby has a mental handicap, language development is a lot of times the first thing that you're going to notice. Uh, and then it can also represent uh, some developmental disorders uh, such as autism, uh, which language is profoundly impacted in some of the more severe forms of autism spectrum disorders. Of course, language issues can also indicate a hearing disorder. If the baby's not able to hear speech, the baby's not going to understand speech or learn how to speak. And so if there's a severe hearing disorder that uh, has been diagnosed, then that can cause problems. And that should definitely be the first thing that you rule out. So this is Jean Piaget. He was uh, a 20th century Swiss uh, developmental psychologist. And he came up with these cognitive development theories, uh, which are named after him, and uh, really sort of split uh, these, uh, these stages in child development uh, into uh, identifiable phases. And we're going to primarily be talking about these two uh, phases, uh, sensory motor and preoperational. Uh, but what this really means is... From about zero to two years of age, the child is not quite linguistic yet, and so the child's development is pretty much driven by their motor development. The baby uh, starts to crawl, starts to walk, and is able to explore things, able to feel things, and that's really what drives their cognitive development. On the other hand, uh, once they hit two years of age and they start to develop their linguistic skills, which really uh, starts, to, uh, starts to increase dramatically at two years of age, uh, then their cognitive development is more driven by linguistics, and uh, they'll start to develop their grammar and uh, their imagination uh, because those are a little bit more developed by verbal thinking. Okay, so uh, if you've watched my uh, social and motor uh, lectures, you've probably seen I don't have any issue with this book, but I did come across it, and I had some reserves about it because babies are not robots, and when you think of day by day, if a mother comes in and she says, my baby is 12 
months old. This book said my baby should be walking by 12 months old. What's wrong with my baby? Remember, there are ranges for all this stuff. Not all babies develop at the same speed as others. Some babies might develop very early linguistically or uh, cognitively, might take a little bit longer motor-wise, but there's a normal range, and so it's not always going to fall uh, the same way. So uh, remember that if a parent comes in and they're freaking out, to remember to remind them that there is a range. And if that range is exceeded by a month or two, then you can start looking at uh, if there's something underlying it. But uh, these, this strict idea that there's a day-by-day-by-day chronological timeline of what should happen. That's, that's not true at all. So a newborn uh, is really not going to develop a whole lot cognitively as far as we can see on the outside. Their vision is highly limited and so they're not really going to be able to uh, see much of the outside world uh, outside of what is uh, a foot away from them. Uh, their vision is very highly limited, only about 8 to 12 inches, which is really just enough to be able to see the mother while they're nursing. And uh, they should react to voice, uh, but uh, that's pretty much it. They're not going to be able to recognize any words, uh, certainly. Uh, they will uh, fixate on moving objects, but they will not be able to track them uh, very far. But they will see you if you're standing above them. Uh, they prefer the human face, and that makes perfect sense because it's just an evolutional thing. Uh, they, need to be able, they need to be able to know what a human face looks like to survive. And they will establish eye contact around one month of age, and that's a really rewarding thing uh, for the parent. Uh, probably as about rewarding as uh, when the baby makes their first smile. The infant should regain their birth weight by two weeks of age, and they should grow 30 grams per day until four to five months of age, at which point their birth weight should have doubled. Now, at two months of age, uh, the baby is able to differentiate among patterns and colors and consonants and sounds, but because the baby can't really communicate or express uh, his or herself either verbally or non-verbally, it's really kind of hard to notice that the baby really does uh, know the difference between patterns and colors and consonants. Uh, so you might not really notice this. Uh, the baby will be able to track objects to midline so they can look to their right, track it all the way to their midline. Um, then by four months, they should be able to uh, notice objects crossing the midline. So at four months of age, the infant will become noticeably more distracted by surroundings, particularly as their visual system uh, develops, their visual acuity matures. Uh, the infant loves to explore their body, uh, particularly their hands and their mouth. Uh, they a lot of times will stick their hands in their mouth earlier on than four months of age, but they really start to uh, manipulate their body and exploring their body uh, at about four months of age. And uh, they'll touch all different parts of their bodies, and yes, that includes the genitals. And that's a common concern that parents have. Uh, my one-year-old or my four-month-old or my three-year-old is touching his penis or touching her vagina. And what's up with that? Uh, is this abnormal? What's wrong with my child? And that is completely normal from four months of age or even earlier uh, all the way to about five years of age when the child is about ready to go into school and is, should be able to understand boundaries. Um, it's, perfectly, uh, it's, it's perfectly normal for the child to stimulate th themselves. So that's that's not uh, something to even necessarily be discouraged because the child is realizing cause and effect. Uh, the sense of proprioception begins to mature. Uh, the infant will be able to re recognize some emotions and maybe even will mirror some emotions. And so this is that social smile and then eventually the, uh, the uh, sustained social smile uh, where you look at the baby and you smile and then they smile back. And parents absolutely love this. Um, so they'll be able to tell you right away if the baby is doing this. And you'll be able to tell in the exam room, too. Uh, object permanence hasn't developed yet. So when a baby, well, when they're looking at something and then it goes away, they assume that it's gone, it's disappeared, it's vanished. Uh, so playing things like peekaboo will really amuse the infant because you cover your face up. They think you're gone. They think you're, you're no more. Uh, and then you show yourself again, and they're like, oh, where did you come from? 
And so that will really amuse the infant. Whereas once the baby has developed object permanence, they're really, you know, they, they might be startled a little bit by your face, but uh, they're really not fooled. Uh, by four months of age, growth slows down a little bit to about 20 grams per day. Birth weight has typically doubled by this point. At six months of age, the primitive reflexes have disappeared, and so the baby has uh, more ability to grasp and manipulate objects. Remember that Palmer grasp reflex. If they, uh, when they still have that, it's hard for them to drop things, and it's hard for them to move things from hand to hand because they're la locked onto it. Uh, so once the baby loses that, they're able to uh, transfer things from hand to hand, feel things and feel textures and explore uh, these objects. Now, the first place the objects go is their mouth. Remember, oral fixation. So uh, because the objects tend to go to the mouth first, uh, it's really, really important uh, that small objects and unsafe toys are kept away from the baby. And that needs to be stressed to the parents before the six months of age period. So probably something that you'll want to let them know at two or four, four month uh, visit. And then the babies at this age uh, really enjoy dropping objects. So because they lose that Palmer grasp reflex, they're able to drop things. And when they're at a certain height, if they drop things, it makes a sound, a crash. And this cause and effect really excites them. They have this ability to drop something and uh, make a noise. And of course, because they don't have uh, object permanence yet, they also think that they've made this object magically disappear. Uh, so they're really, really uh, perplexed by that and enjoy that. And it probably annoys the parent to some extent, but this is, again, this is an important cognitive uh, development stage for them because they're, uh, they're, they're realizing what they can do. But later on, they will realize that they really could not make that object disappear as they develop uh, object permanence. So at this point, uh, if you take a toy and place it in front of the baby, uh, and you cover it, the uh, baby's playing with the toy, and then you take the toy away, put it in front of the baby, and cover it up with the blanket, they will take that blanket off and start playing with the toy again because they know it didn't vanish. Whereas beforehand, if you cover that toy up, the baby will look around maybe a little bit, and then they'll give up and say, well, well, they won't say it, but they'll, they'll decide that that object has vanished. So this is, uh, that, that's a, you can even do this as a clinical exam uh, to make sure that the baby has developed uh, object permanence. The infant at this point should also be able to recognize or respond to their name. So if you say the baby's name, they should uh, look or at least show some, uh, some response they also uh, start to uh, uh, vocalize in uh, more monosyllabic babbling, whereas before it was more cooing, uh, more uh, vowel sounds. Now it's more consonant sounds. Um, so ka, 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 ma, ma, ma. And it's uh, the inflections that the baby will show sounds just like the baby's having a conversation. So the baby hears adults talking. That's how the baby's going to inflect their voice. Uh, because uh, that's how they believe that they should sound, and they're right, but they're not really saying any words. So it sounds like the baby's having a conversation with you, but it's just these this babbling sound. A lot of times the parent will say, my child just had their first word, and you could probably say that, but uh, they might not be, uh, they, they might not necessarily know what they're saying. Uh, at this point, it's not really clear. Uh, but if they're just babbling the ma sound and they say ma, 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 then they, uh, uh, the mother usually or the father will say, uh, he said mama or she said dada. Uh, but that could just be mimicry. Uh, it, we really don't know. It's hard to get into their minds. But uh, the, the, the first word should develop by one year of age. Uh, so here's object permanence. Baby is not fooled. So this is just an uh, experiment you can try with the baby. Uh, take a toy from them, cover it up. If the baby uncovers it, object permanent. So by one year of age, the baby should be able to say uh, or recognize a word other than mama or dada or some word that's uh, monosyllabic babbling. So something like cat or dog or um, grandma. Uh, and, and so that would be uh, a, a word, and they should be able to, that should be associated with that actual object. 
Um, so if, if you put if you you've got a picture book with them uh, and and you show the baby picture of cat and they may point at it you say cat they may point at the cat or they'll say cat and point at it themselves um, they should be able to recognize uh, and or say a word uh, and associate that with what it is uh, their cognitive development is really nurtured at this point because the baby starts to be able to walk at 12 to 15 months of age and they can navigate away from the caretaker that can also become problematic though because it becomes a little bit more difficult to supervise them but that walking and exploring should be encouraged and if you discourage them from doing that it can hamper their cognitive development so it should be encouraged but it also needs to be encouraged that uh, mom and dad need to look around the house at baby's point of view and tie up any cords make sure that nothing is around that the baby can uh, can get into also useful if there's stairs to uh, put a barrier up against the stairs because the baby can easily fall down the stairs they should also be able to follow one-step commands, so something like give me, give me that, or come here, if they're able to walk or crawl, uh, they should be able to follow those. And then by 12 months of age, the baby's birth weight should have tripled. By 16 months of age, the baby should be able to build a two or three block tower. Uh, you uh, remember the formula to how many cubes the baby should be able to stack. It's uh, three times the baby's age in years, roughly. Uh, so that's a way you can remember it. And while the baby's vocabulary is typically limited at this point, uh, the child is very able to, uh, to communicate non-verbally. And that's the child's primary way of uh, communicating. So if you put, uh, if the baby's crying and uh, you have a blanket in one hand and a bottle in the other hand, the baby will point at what one they want. Um, and that's how they communicate. So here's a baby pointing at something, maybe uh, maybe his mom, maybe a bottle, maybe a blanket, uh, but the baby is pointing saying, that's what I want. And who does the baby learn how to point from? Grown up. So again, underscoring the importance so the baby needs to be able to observe adults in order to uh, develop uh, cognitively on time. By a year and a half old, the baby should be able to build a four block tower and the vocabulary should include at least 10 words and at least one body part. And also at this point, the child should have some understanding of the word no. Now, that doesn't mean that the child will always uh, abide by the word no. Uh, a lot of us adults don't abide by the word no all the time. Uh, like when I'm told no coffee at 6 o'clock at night and I drink coffee. Uh, but... The child should show some understanding that uh, they know that no means that I really shouldn't do that. So, for instance, if you uh, uh, if if uh, a if the child is uh, you have a, a, a uh, uh, you have a jar of candy and the child's going in for the jar of candy, you say no, no, and the child might look at you with suspicious eyes. They might go for it. Uh, whereas if the baby's one year of age, um, or 15 months old even, um, you say no, they're just doing it. They don't know what that word means. By two years of age, the child should be able to scribble or copy a circle. They should also be able to put a very basic sentence together. So the rule of thumb is the, baby, or the child is able to put a sentence together uh, roughly that corresponds to their age. So if it's uh, if they're two, they should be able to put two words together. If they're three, they should be able to put three words together. If they are four, they should be able to put, put four words together and so forth. Um, so this actually uh, represents a really dramatic shift in their cognition. So up until now, uh, everything that they've known as far as words has been nouns. But in, able to put, in, in order to put a sentence together, you not only need nouns, but you need verbs. And nouns are easy for a child to understand because they're objects you can see. But verbs are ideas and concepts that aren't physical. So want, come, go, think, those are concepts. And so now the child is beginning to grasp uh, the uh, idea of concepts and things that aren't visible as opposed to just the very visible uh, uh, 
tangential things that you can feel. Uh, so um, at the age of two and beyond, the vocabulary really, really begins to blossom. And uh, this is also the point where child uh, begins to use pronouns and possessives, particularly the word mine. And again, they may not use that word appropriately. A lot of times, little kids at age two will think that everything is mine, uh, but they like that word and they know that things that belong to them are definitely mine, but even some things that don't belong to them might still be mine. So. Uh, just because they're using it doesn't mean they're using it uh, appropriately, but they should use it appropriately, at least for the things that are theirs. So this is that graphic I was telling you about. And this is vocabulary acquisition, and it uh, compares socioeconomic statuses. And uh, you can see that it starts out, of course, pretty similar, uh, but children in, uh, in poorer families on welfare, uh, children in working class families and children in more uh, wealthy families, professional families, I don't know the exact income uh, that they're using here, uh, they have a much different uh, vocabulary uh, uh, range. So uh, by the age of three, just three years old, a child in a welfare family will only have about 525 words in their vocabulary, whereas a child in a professional family will have more than twice that. And what that probably has to do with is that children who are in families that are on welfare, both parents are working, or maybe there's just one parent around, and uh, there's not a lot of interaction. Whereas in children with professional families, they're probably in a preschool or a daycare where they're getting a lot of interaction, um, or maybe even one parent is, uh, is stays home uh, during the day. So uh, it really highlights um, not just the socioeconomic uh, uh, barriers to uh, the so-called achievement gap, uh, but also the importance of uh, parent interacting with the child um, to, uh, to, to help uh, the child develop uh, cognitively. And this is certainly going to be really important by the time the child starts kindergarten. I mean, if you, if, even, if this, uh, even if you weren't to uh, extrapolate this graph, this, this graph uh, a baby or a child who starts kindergarten with twice the amount of words uh, as another child is uh, going to be much more successful in school. Uh, by two and a half years of age, the child should use the word I and me and use it appropriately to refer to himself or herself. If you ask the child what their name is, they should respond with their name. They should also be able to make horizontal and vertical lines with crayon, which is a fine motor skill. Uh, and then their birth weight by this point should have quadrupled by two and a half. At three years of age, the child should know their age. Uh, they should tell you their age, and they should also be able to count to at least three. So that makes sense that they can tell you three because they should be at least able to count to three, maybe higher. And they should also be able to tell you uh, if they're a boy or a girl. Now, there's very, very, very few exceptions to that that are legitimate. Uh, in which a child, you know, really does not know, and there's uh, there's sexual identity uh, or gender identity um, issues, legitimate uh, gender identity issues that may be there. Uh, but for the most part, 99.9% .9 of uh, these children are going to be able to tell you, I'm a boy or I'm a girl. Uh, their speech should be mostly understandable by strangers. The rule of thumb is their age over four is understandable by strangers. So. At two years of age, it's two over four or half understandable by strangers. By three years, it should be mostly understandable, three quarters understandable. And by four, they should be pretty much totally understandable by strangers. Uh, they should be able to count to three, and then they should be able to recognize at least three colors. And again, these are things that you can test the child for uh, when they come in for their well child exam. By four years of age, they should be able to connect those horizontal and vertical lines into the shape of a square. They also begin to use the past tense. And again, we're talking about a huge cognitive leap here because present tense and past tense are very different conceptual ideas. And so now that they're able to make this conceptual uh, differentiation, they should be able to tell you a short story or narrative of something that recently happened to them. And that not only shows you their cognition and their grasp of the linguistics, but it also shows you their uh, ability, their their memory, and their uh, their short term uh, their, their short term 
uh, memory preservation. So uh, it doesn't need to be a real uh, lengthy narrative, but if it's something like, we came here in the car, uh, or uh, um, I went to my friend's house, or even something simpler than that, um, I fell on my bike. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's perfectly appropriate, uh, and that's what should be happening at four. And then this is really interesting. Their thought press, uh, process uh, from around three or four years of age to usually around seven or eight years of age um, is typically magical in nature. So this is the time when they start to have imaginary friends. Um, they play house. They play, uh, play imaginary games. Uh, and also when they start to get really, really worried about monsters under their bed or in their closet. Now, they might be worried about that maybe a little bit earlier, uh, but this is when they really start to have those problems uh, going to bed at night because they're afraid of monsters. They cannot be reasoned with, with logic. They're not at that point yet. Uh, and so one of the things you can tell parents is to reason with them with their magical thought process. So they think there's monsters in the, under their bed or uh, in the closet. You're not going to be able to tell them, uh, no, there's no monsters. We have the doors locked. Look, there's no monsters here. There's no monsters under there. Not going to work. What you can tell parents to do is put on a blanket as a cape and take uh, uh, the remote as a wand and say, I am going to destroy all these monsters in this room. And the child might believe you because the child thinks in a magical process. And so uh, that's a way that you can uh, get beyond that. Might not always work, but it's worth trying. Definitely works better than using logic with them. So this is conservation, and this is really important as far as Piaget's theory. This happens a little bit later on at seven years of age um, or thereabouts. And so the experiment that's classically used is you put two, uh, two glasses of water, same exact kind of glass of water, with the same exact amount of water in it, and the child will tell you, okay, it's the same amount, obviously. Now you take a really tall glass uh, and you pour one of those glasses of water into that tall glass, and so now it looks, it's the same amount of water, obviously, but one of them looks taller than the other, is taller than the other, but it's the same amount. Before the, uh, before the child develops conservation, the child will go towards the tall glass of water and say, that has more, because children will think, that tall is more. That's usually the way they look at uh, amount is based on height and tall. Uh, once they develop conservation, they will be able to tell you it's the same amount of water. So that's what conservation is. So just a summary of these important uh, milestones. Um, so uh, they establish eye contact about one month of age. They will grasp, visualize, and manipulate objects at six months old. Um, object permanence develops at nine months of age. They should be able to say or recognize a few words at one years old. Uh, their uh, vocabulary expands to ten words by a year and a half. They should recognize what no means. By two years of age, they should be able to put a basic sentence together, just two words put together to make a, a sentence with meaning. Uh, by three years of age, they should know their age and sex. They should be able to count to three, and uh, they should be mostly their language should be mostly understood by strangers. And by four years of age, they should be able to tell a story and using the past tense. One more thing I just wanted to bring up, and I didn't write it in here. Children who grow up in bilingual, uh, bilingual environments, their linguistic development tends to be a little bit slower, and that is totally normal. They will pick up later on, and children who grow up, and it should not be discouraged, children who grow up in bilingual environments tend to do better, uh, even have possibly have higher IQs uh, later on, they tend to do better in school. So while growing up in an environment where you hear English and Spanish uh, spoken both in the same house, uh, while it will, it will delay their language uh, relative to other students, they will more than make up for it once they start going to school. Um, and so that's not to be discouraged, and parents may be concerned about that and ask you. And um, so bilingual, totally fine. It's actually beneficial. Uh, so um, that's it for cognitive milestones.